Athens Motors will be out of business. I've just arrived at Athens Motors, and I can't figure out if this place is even open. Oh. Where are all the cars? Wow, look at this place. The first thing I notice in the showroom is I feel like I've just entered Caesar's Palace. Pla that, that, that is, so let me, let me go back to the cars thing. So that is, um, a very common sight. This, I mean, this was, I don't know, a number of years ago. It's like season two of The Prophet. But, but this is a common sight. I was just at um, a couple of dealerships just like the other day, and there was like literally no cars in the parking lot. Um, <laughs> there's just like nothing available, I guess, uh, which is not a good sign. You want to see cars in front of businesses, especially when you're taking um, – any kind of glamour shots, you you want it to not look like it's empty. Uh, so so make sure that you're getting those shots with cars parked in it, and especially with such a large parking lot, uh, it it definitely would help to have have something. It looks like there's some kind of over here, like some cars, maybe they're employee cars or something like that. But yeah, definitely definitely don't want that when you roll up. Wow. Look at this place. The first thing I notice in the showroom is I feel like I've just entered Caesar's Palace. Clouds painted on the ceiling. I see murals all over the place. I'm waiting for Zeus to pop out. There are no customers around. And much <laughs> well, like it matches outside. the name Athens, you know, Tide. Greece. The only thing I see are a few vintage luxury vehicles in the showroom. Mm. Hey. Marcus. How you doing, buddy? Pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. What do you think of the place when you first walked in? It's, it's, yeah, it's built out. <laughs> I'm ready to be one of the best independent stores in the United States. You gotta get some cars first. What'd you spend on these walls? Wow. Close to 100,000, 80,000. Oh, so we, so sometimes, you know, we, we as business owners, we, we get caught up in the, what does it look like and what kind of experience uh, visually are we giving to our customers, to our, you know, to our team members, but a hundred thousand dollars, like some paint. I mean, I think Mar Marcus's face says it all right there. He, it pretty, pretty much says it all. Like he, it's not necessary to spend a hundred thousand dollars on some walls. You put in how much in renovating the place? A million dollars? Over two million. Oh wow. man. I created a state-of-the-art customer lounge. And what did what did it cost to build out this whole room? Close to half a million. Come on. Pete, why? Customers don't want to hang out. They want to buy cars at a fair price and then they want to go home. What'd you pay for the building? 1.875 million. So you have a little under four million in the facility. Yes. How much debt do you have? God. Okay. So uh real quick there, I um Wow. Okay. Look, having a state of the art place doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend a ton of money, right? Let's let's go. Let's 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 backtrack a little bit here. So it looks like he, is that is that paintings on the wall or is those waterfalls? I guess, it looks like I guess they're paintings, but you know, uh, but they have like the lights on the inside, like that kind of stuff is. It looks awesome, but it's not going to help you sell any more cars, right? And and Marcus is not wrong here. We want a nice place. We want a place that feels modern, but it doesn't have to be so modern that it's like, I did I walk into a dealership or did I walk into a casino where I'm literally like pulling the, you know, putting my money in uh, like over and over and over and over again. Um, people don't need, people don't need that, right? It, they need a, a comfortable place to, to be able to relax uh, and, and, and that just seems like overkill. So spending half a million dollars on renovations uh, is, is, is definitely more than they probably need. They want to so. buy cars at a fair price and then they want to go home. What would you pay for the building? 1.875 million. So you have a little under 4 million in the facility. Yes. How much debt do you have on the business? 6.9 million. 5.3 million is myself, my money, and the rest is just friends and family. Where's the money? holding the losses to keep this place going. I'm losing over $100,000 a month for almost two and a half years. This is a bad scenario. Here's Erica. Hi. Thanks, man. Yeah. Okay, so with, this is this is chopped up uh, immensely. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments below if you if you like doing these the profit in 10 minutes uh, videos versus like getting the whole episode. Because I, I, I have access to the whole episode. Look, I could totally do the whole episode, but the video is going to be closer to like an hour versus maybe 20 minutes. So... But yeah, I you know when it comes to renovations, I, I I'm firmly planted in the fact that you should be putting money aside to do those renovations every five to ten years, depending on what kind of operation you have. Uh, I think that there's there, you know, when you're going, um, I, I I know when we went from the shop that we had back in the '80s where we shared a. a, a uh, an industrial park with a bunch of other like companies it, the industrial park is something that my great grandfather built with my grandfather, my dad, my great uncle. 
And moving that to the building that we had uh, prior to selling it. So we, we were in that building for uh, like close to 20 years. It felt like like Caesar's Palace. It was it was big. It was um, all encompassing versus having a lot of warehouses in the back to get the job done. And there's there's a lot to be said for up, upscaling that. Like my dad was a big believer in that. Uh, you know, spent the money on the diamond plate to put it wrap it around the counter. I I should probably get some video or some pictures or something like that to put it in here. But I uh, I while I don't disagree. Um, I think that there's a level of sanity of how much should be spent. And uh, when you are running out of cars, you know, it would be a lot nicer to, to be able to have that cash there to be able to spend to get more cars and get more marketing because people aren't going to necessarily go because it looks nice. That's just icing on the cake, right? So um, it, it needs to be you know, that money really needs to be allocated to getting inventory and then putting people into that, that inventory. So the marketing that you're doing, radio ads, uh, internet, you know, Facebook ads, social media marketing, uh, sponsoring events, sponsoring local teams and things of that nature, soccer, local soccer, kids, soccer teams, baseball teams, things of that nature. That's where that money would be much better spent. For I'm sure. Marcus. I'm America. I'm the operations manager here, so I do all the accounting, all the finance. Do you have a, a financial statement for last month? Um, the books are in your office. Everything stays in Pete's office. But not because you can't get it. It just stays in my office. Are you Tony? Yes, I am. <laughs> so There's a control thing there. So uh, I, growing up I, in a family business, I get it. Like, you know, we we have people that want to keep their thumb down and, keep you know, keep their... Uh, keep their control over the books and, and an oversight and things of that nature. But people need to be able to be, to be able to do their job. It's, it's very demeaning uh, when you're in a certain specific position with a certain so set title, with a certain set of responsibilities and you don't have direct access to the books. Uh, oh, it's in my office. Yeah. But what if you're in a meeting? Like what, like I, I very much am of the mindset that you need to allow your get out of your own way to allow your team to do it. It's not that you don't have access to it. And honestly, the books probably should be in QuickBooks and you all have access to it. It's not that hard. Even when this was filmed, I don't know, eight years ago or whatever, it's not that hard. You, you need to get on that. And if you need help doing that, I, I'm your guy. I can help you get those processes in place. Uh, so go go check out superjoepardo.com uh, and I can and you know fill out the form and I can come help you with that with your business. But but just when you're getting as an, even as an entrepreneur, getting those things in place as you grow, um, it's it it just make sure you're getting out of your own way. Marcus, nice to meet you. Very so nice you're the manager. I'll wear all the hats. You wear all the hats, okay. I have been in the car business about 18 years. The service seems busy. Yeah, service does like $100,000 per month. Sometimes we nice. do a little bit more. Those guys all report into you? Yes and no. Pete wants his finger on every single thing in the store. He micromanages even the buying of the cars. We have X amount of money to spend. He wants to spend money on a $100,000 Porsche. It makes more sense to buy $10,000, $15,000 cars that the average working class is looking for. He says, I'm writing the checks. I'm writing the money. This is what we're going to buy. That's what he does. And look what's outside. No cars. There's and no cars. And, and the relationship is very strained. Uh, you know, so... And that 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 feeds right back into the book. The books are sitting in my office, yo, and that's uh, some old school way of thinking. Um, and the the micromanaging, you know, the micromanagement especially takes over when uh, things aren't going right, and you feel like you got to put your your finger in it. And instead of utilizing people like him who have. Uh, what, what do you say that uh, two decades, 20, 30 years of experience in the car industry and no, like, obviously he likely knows what he's talking about. I mean, to, to, for the, for the shop to pull a hundred thousand dollars of a, you know, put, put a uh, service through a month. That's a, that's a pretty significant chunk. I mean, that means they're, they're turning through a lot of cars, but then that means you have customers showing up. And when the customers are there, you have nothing to show them except one Porsche or two, you know, one or two high-end cars, it's like, well, they can't afford that. So they're not even looking at that. They're not going to be able to buy that. So unless you, even if you have the best salespeople in the world, um, it's surprising. The other thing is, is when when you show up and you're like, hey, I want to get my, my go to Athens to get my car repaired. 
cool. But when you start looking around and you start seeing like all these crazy expensive things, you start wondering like how much more am I paying for those expensive things, you know, to be in place rather than, uh, you know, having a few bucks cheaper on my bill, you know, it's like, is the, mar am, am I getting marked up even further because I'm, you know, be effectively paying for those, you know, that expensive waiting room that nobody is making sure that they're hanging out in. I mean, it didn't look like there was anybody there when they were filming again, there's editing involved and then editing on top of editing being this is profit, the profit in 10 minutes, but just things to think about when you're developing your business, uh, especially in a, in a physical brick and mortar, uh, operation, like what, um, what kind of stuff, you know, does the, is the customer going to see? Yeah. They want to be aligned with a winner there's, but there's a definitely, there's a middle ground there between spending half a million dollars on a re renovation and maybe spending 50 to a hundred thousand dollars on a renovation. You find, you know, the, the right deals for the chairs, you, you know, and I, I actually, um, have one of, uh, an interior decorator is one of our, um, super entrepreneur education and mastermind members. So, uh, go check that out. Superjoepardo.com slash seem S E E M. So you, uh, don't seem super, you can be super, but yeah, I would absolutely say, uh, this, they're all symptoms of the same thing with like the money's going out, money's not coming in and you start getting real, like fine tuning, you know, too involved with the business instead of relying on the people that you have. And when you have great people like him, uh, like the manager here that wears so many hats, you, you have to be able to rely on those people and lean on them. It's important that you understand that I take relationships and business very seriously. What do you stand to lose if this business closes? I would lose my house, my dream. It would be yeah. catastrophic. Stakes are huge. Well, the stakes are big for me too. I take money very seriously. My offer is very simple. It's three and a half million dollars to help clear the debt, bring in new cars for inventory, and essentially change Athens Motors into a brand new business that makes money. And you share in the economics. And we'll be 50-50 partners, but I'm 100% in charge. Because I know this business better than you do. I'm just, I'm a little concerned when you say 100% you run the business because I, I believe I, I have something special here. What's special about it? You have a used car lot with no inventory. But, but you know, there's the there's the the shark uh, shark Marcus, right? He 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 he's not afraid to say the you know state the obvious. And uh, in this case, you know, Pete is operating from a a very down position of I got no inventory to sell, and I, I have a shop that's doing very well. And I, I you know I think you know good on Marcus for. Uh, I, I mean, I think that's a, a fair offer. It's an opportunity for him to get out of his own way. But I also think that it puts him in, in a, posi Pete in a position um, to grow and to learn, right? That you don't have to put your finger in every single aspect of the business. Yes, you need to um, monitor and, and hold people accountable. And if you don't want to be that person, because sometimes, you know, look, it's not always, it's not always the dream job for everybody. They, you know, you have to do things that you don't want to do, make decisions you don't want to make and, and put other people in an uncomfortable position, which puts you in an uncomfortable position. I understand. I've been there and, and I get it. Um, but for the good of the business uh, and the good of the people that you're, you're bringing into your team and your fold. I think you absolutely need to need to learn to grow, you know, always be growing. If we're not growing, we're dying. And in Pete's case, uh, it, you know, this is a this is like an angel coming out of the sky. And it like, here's an opportunity to, to get the boulder off of my back of the debt that I have, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity for my team to feel confident in where we're headed with pairing up with a guy like Marcus Limonis. Um, and, and go, and go forward and, uh, and hopefully stop micromanaging your team. What I have set up is infrastructure. But it isn't just that. It's, there's no process in place. I don't care how much money you have. You can't have the right resources to actually run the business the right way overnight. I gave you a very fair offer. It's a yes or a no. So that that's discounting what Marcus brings to the table. I mean, he made his, 
you know, start out of the car industry. If you ever watched the first episode of The Profit, he went to one eight hundred car cash or cash for cars or something like that. Uh, you can go and check that out. Um, I'll put that. I'll, maybe I'll drop the link below uh, for you to go and check out that series. I did that whole series broken down into five uh, five different videos. But uh, you know, I'm really. Um, I really want people to understand that th this this is this is you know having just because you have the place it, it's kind of like building a house of cards is is really effectively what you're doing because like if one big thing went wrong dude goes bankrupt you know having a hundred thousand dollars pass through the shop is cool but it's not I mean that's only one point two million a year right and that's only, that's if everything apparently goes right. <laughs> Uh, that you know that they're gonna get that. So they're and they're missing out on opportunities to sell cars to those people that are coming through the door. Um, it, yeah, I, it's it's uh, you know I think sometimes we we get caught up on like what grandiose ideas that we have, um, and and just like whatever it costs, it doesn't matter because I have the money because it's all gonna work out because I know what I'm doing. And I'm not saying that Pete doesn't know what he's doing um, from a from a business standpoint. What I'm saying is is that the boulder and the weight and the stress of that money that was spent rather than having the money there to be able to say, you know, we had a down month, we had a down quarter and that's okay. You know, I was able to, to, to take some money and pay the pe you know, pay my people, keep them happy, keep them there. And, you know, we'll pay my and pay myself back in the next quarter. Cause we're going to get it back. You know, we're going to, cause you just don't know. I mean, you know, COVID happens and you go from having like, Oh, we had like 10 cars in the, in the lot or, or 20 cars in the lot or 30 cars in the lot, 50 cars in the lot, hundred cars in the lot. Now all of a sudden we have no cars in the lot because everybody bought them. And, and now I really have nothing to show for, for my business um, and no money to, to really be able to, to do it. Yes. I'm writing a check for three and a half million dollars. Maybe for the first time have a good night's sleep. Yeah, this see, and that, ding, ding, that is exactly what money enables you to be able to do. When you go and you spend it, you know, and you're getting all that stress, all that weight on your shoulders, and you just it just continues to mount, you can't spend your way out of it all the time. It doesn't, it, you know, certain situations it works, but it doesn't always work out that way. So um, if you're in that situation, please consider uh, well, calling Will Marcus, or, or or if Marcus doesn't answer, give me a call. I can absolutely help you straighten out those issues, get rid of those micromanagement problems, and get the right people in to help you get there uh, through your optimizing your process and really getting a uh, a real process. And uh, you know, even just having when he talked about Marcus talked about not having the process, the process there is where's the cars. Right. Where, where, who's, how is the decisions being made that lead to no cars in the parking lot? Oh, that I'm 100% in charge. Correct. We have a deal? We have a deal. Pleasure. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. How much is this Porsche? 76 dollars How much is this car? 30 How much is that car? 46 How many cars can I have on the lot instead of an $80,000 Porsche? Three, four, five. Erica? Six. Six, five, six defense. This is cash. I mean, they might be feeding the answers <laughs> to to them, but I would have I would have believed that they uh, would take it at face value. They know that they, they know what the value is, right? It's simple math, and having more cars is more opportunities. It's, it's melting down on us. They gotta go. What are we on it for? Forty six. Oh, great! Come on, guys. How much is this car worth? Thirty two. Twenty eight five. Oh, next car. You can't buy that at twenty eight five. This Lexus. I owe 33 and How come you don't know these numbers? I could answer you. Let him answer. What's the car worth? 48. <laughs> well, I'll stop answering. What do we own it for? About $45,000. What's it worth? Low 40s. 38.5. Pete, they're not worth anything if they don't sell. They're just sitting here. In their past 60 days, they're going to get liquidated. If we take a loss, we're going to learn our lesson. These are the wrong cars for this market. Tire. Yes. Um, so that's one of those things where, um, and now I don't know if Pete bought the car outright with cash or if he's, you know, gotten a loan or if he's working with like, um, so, you know, well, I guess a loan would be the same thing as like a floor plan from a dealership. Cause so we had a dealership for a while, uh, through coyote tractors and, 
you know, if we didn't flip them, it, the the tractors in, uh, I think it was 60 days, you know, we started to play, pay on the floor, floor plan on it um, and with interest. So it, it was very imperative that, like, we get them onto the floor, get people, you know, butts into those seats of those tractors, and then start making deals as quickly as possible and uh, and, and have the, the financing and everything in, in, in place for them. I, obviously, tractors are not cars. But it was it was still a, it was a dealership uh, side of it, and we also had tra trailers as well, like big you know forty foot, uh, 50, 53 foot, fifty six foot trailers. So, you know, I, I it, it, he's absolutely right. If the cars aren't selling, it's time to start lowering the price, increase the opportunity for people to come in. If in this case, if you're going to take a hit, take a hit. But at least you got the cash flow coming in so that you can go and go buy other cars with it and hopefully not make the same mistake again. It's the same with real estate, you know, buying and flipping houses. You, you really got to work uh, the t you know, you're on a time limit. As soon as that car hits your lot, like or even before it hits the lot, you know, you are you are always got to have a sense of urgency of I got to get rid of this car and uh, the used car market. And even the new car market is not one that I envy at all. Uh, it's a very high stress uh, industry to be in as a salesperson uh, and as an owner as well. So, you know, because you're always on the clock and it doesn't matter what you did last month. It's what you do right now. Uh, and speaking of right now, at the end of this video, I have uh, a comment from one of you. Uh, so if you have a comment question, drop it down below. But yeah, if uh, so, we we'll get that comment at the very end of the video. There's brakes, everything's better than 50% at all the fluids on the car. I think the car's somewhere in that 28 range. 28.5, I'll sell the car and it'll be it'll be done with. Okay. Hey, Tom, what's, what's going, going on? on? This is Andrew. Hey, how are Andrew? You? Nice to meet you. I'm selling the car for 28 and a half. Car's worth 30 all day wholesale. I think that if I bring it to the auction, it does 27, 27.5. And I think at 28.5, I'm just trying to open the door to do business here. Well, I still think 28.5 was too low. Unless you and I talk over here. Sorry, Andrew. What is the problem? with letting Tony do this job. If you cut somebody's balls off every time they make a decision or in front of somebody, he does the deal and then the deal unwinds, it's a problem. The reason you're taking a $5,000 loss is because you bought the car wrong. You can't do that anymore. And Andrew, the car sold at 28.5. So, so, okay. <laughs> Marcus, I love you, but you literally just did what you said not to do. <laughs> Do to his own teammate, you know, to the to the team members, and uh, and and Pete's face says it all, right? Um, but I I think it's sometimes important, and we we see this uh, in bar rescue specifically. Uh, sometimes you have to tear people down before you can build them back up, and I am very much of the thought process that Marcus. Uh, is doing what's right for the people that he's, you know, he, I mean, look, he, he, you don't, you don't, even if it's for, even if it was just for TV, right? You don't write a check for $3.5 million without the intention of trying to help the people in which you're trying to help going in 50, 50%, you know, 50, 50 is, is huge, right? Like you're, he, Marcus is putting up a ton of money uh, for an opportunity to work with with somebody and he wants that person to grow and succeed just like that's what i'm here to do help you the super entrepreneur work to succeed and learn to succeed uh, we're at the auto auction where tony will have a chance to do his job and buy inventory without pete interfering all right too many miles i don't want it you can buy this car for like Five grand, 5,500. Car's probably worth about nine grand. Nine grand. Yes. The balance is 386,672. Okay. Okay. Today we picked up 28 used cars. We more than doubled our inventory. Take care. Ding, ding. We're gonna and that's and that's huge, right? Being able to to go and write that check. Obviously, Pete was not in a position where he was going to be able to write that kind of money. Uh, in in one single day, with the hope that they could do it. Um, being now, this again edited upon edits here. Uh, hopefully, Pete actually let him do his job uh, and and sink or float. Right, like that's that's what you know. We're all here to do is to put our best foot forward and sink or float. So we, ha as as managers, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, we have to be willing to allow our people to have that opportunity to sink or flow. And, and 
train, you know, train, coach, you know, you, you need to be that coach too, right? To your teammates, to, to, the, to your team members so that they know exactly what you think. And, you know, if they, if they think that you think that it's going to be a good idea, a good play for them. Put in all these excess luxury items so we can reinvest back into the company. This is going to put about $150,000 wow. of working capital in the bank. Woohoo! Check it out. Liquidation. I brought in a crew of several dozen workers to transform the lounge into an auto accessory store. I can't believe you took my lounge away. This was a state-of-the-art lounge. There's just too much square footage not being used. I, Why I, this... I would like to know what a state-of-the-art lounge, some flat screens, some chairs, and some artwork behind you. I'm not, um, I'm not sold on the state-of-the-art lounge. I mean... I, I mean, I, were they massage chairs? Were they going to do my work for me? Uh, where's, like, the desk for me to, like, sit, stay there and, like, get some work done? I, I don't know. I don't I don't really buy that. In fact, a lot of dealerships nowadays, the ones that I've gone to, um, the lounge seems to be – it all seems to be, like, an open floor plan that kind of all flows together, and, and the TV's just kind of there. Um, and in some cases, the TV is not even playing like regular, you know, cable news or what cable TV, but, you know, playing um, uh, promotions for the for the dealership. So, I, you know, because there isn't necessarily a ton of people hanging around, especially with the like advent of Uber and Lyft, like you just boop, boop, boop and, and go. Right. Or have a loan, have loaner cars. I, to me, I think that would be your better play is like, hey, we're a used car dealership that offers loaner cars when we work on your cars. Get them out of there, right? Get them out of there, or ha when they are there, have something for them to be able to buy into. Opportunities for more higher profit, high, you know, higher profit margin products to move through the door, you know, move through, uh, through the customer base. Car still sitting here after I specifically said I needed it done ASAP. Pete told us to stop. What doing do you mean, it. Pete? I've got, I got to listen. All right, you know what? Box. That's fine. I can't work in an environment where someone micromanages. Right, and neither can can the other teammate, team, team members, right? They can't work in this op operation either because who's in charge? Who am I trying to make happy? And that creates like, well, I gotta make this guy happy, I make that. It's the TPS reports from Office Space all over again. Listen, I had decided that I don't wanna do this anymore. Our relationship went to and I'm not gonna let that happen, no more. And there is no amount of money that's ever going to get in between me and my family. And you are my family. My decision is made. And that's, and that's what, you know, auto, uh, not auto, uh, uh, micromanaging will wind up doing is pushing the people who really care. They care because that's why they're still there. That's why they're still working with you because they want you to, su to succeed. They care that much, and 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 they're willing to let you do that micromanaging. But you can only push people so far. USA. Very cool. I love you like it. it. I like it. I didn't agree to that. Why'd you take my name off? Because that's the new name of the business. That's bull. Yeah. You didn't even ask me. Great. So is it about you seeing your name on the building, or is it about selling cars? My name brought customers in the door because I have a great name in Chicago. Everybody knows who I am. That's why they come here. Really? Really. You actually believe that? I absolutely believe that. Uh huh. You know what? I didn't agree to this. The deal's off. No, Pete, it's not off. That's not how it works. Right. So um, changing the name, I, you know, you're 50-50. I get that you're in charge. Um, it probably would have been a good idea to at least let him know that, hey, this is what we're doing, right? Um, but I guess maybe Marcus figured, well, he's going to he's just going to be mad regardless. So let's just do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I it, it ultimately I think he, it would have been better, but also wouldn't have made for as good a TV necessarily <laughs> as dropping that bomb on him. I've put a lot of money into this place, and the employees are happy, and you've liked a lot of the changes. You know you've liked a lot of the changes, but in the end, what matters is that you make money, these people's jobs get saved, and the business survives and it thrives. That's right. the goal here. You're right. So I need you to go along with this process. Do you trust me? I trust you. Then let's go. Let's get back to work, okay? Well, this looks a lot better in here. We've gotten rid of the distracting decor and murals and redesigned the layout so that every square inch of the place can be utilized to generate revenue. 
I, you know, I think that's a that's a huge that's a huge thing, right? So when you look at like casinos, the way they're built with the floors with the ugly carpet and stuff, it's designed for you to not look down, so you look forward at the games in front of you. Uh, the cloud patterns and the cars and things, it's cool, but I think I think that kind of stuff gets really dated really quick. Uh, I at least in my opinion. Uh, also they're in Chicago. So like, I don't know where all these boats and things like it looks like they're in like some kind of tropical like space or something. But I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's, there's a lot more to it about creating a line of sight to the things that you want people to look at than just trying to make, make awesome murals and, and things like people looking up here, looking down there, looking up there, over here. That's not going to sell the parts and the and the cars, right? You want them looking at the cars. The customer lounge is now a full range parts and accessories department, which makes a lot of sense if you have that much repair shop stuff coming through the through the door. The showroom has been converted into a display area where customers can shop for vehicle upgrades like rims, tires, and suspension systems. With the grand opening right around the corner, we're adding the finishing touches to get Auto Match USA ready for its first customers. Today's the grand opening, and we have weather working against us. Ugh. We cannot afford to mess this up. This is a huge day. Hi, welcome. Thanks for braving the weather. Even though we were expected to get over six inches of snow. Welcome to Auto Match USA. I started noticing a steady stream of customers arriving. Thank you for coming. Auto Match USA is filled with customers. Our guys are working their butts off, and Pete has been a selling machine. Do you guys see financing here? We do with all major banks. Anything you like, come here. Just call me. I'm here day and night, so whatever you like. We've been open for a month. That um, That is such a, a, a big thing, like... You know, it's not that Pete, again, going back, Pete, Pete, it's not that Pete didn't know what he was doing. It's that when the money and the, the the stress and everything starts to mount, that's when you start getting like every, oh no, everything needs to be perfect. And, and you feel like you, you need to have your fingers in every single aspect in order for you to be successful. And really... All it, all it really took, I mean, look, you, you, the, all the murals and stuff like that, all it really took was having the cash to be able to put it into cars and getting people to know that you were there, right? Especially if you have such a great name. It's you, you have that name. You have people coming for service. You need to reinvest that money into the, into the inventory and not into, uh, you know, making uh, a temple, if you will, of cars. Uh, and again, stay, stay tuned for, uh, I got the okay, comment of this week, this video improvements. coming up. It's all yours. You run the department. You're going to write all the checks, control all the receipts. I will take a step back in that department. Okay. That is a legit smile there. Ding, ding. And I, I, again, I don't know if that's for TV, but it's good. It, 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 it feels good to be able to take the reins and have responsibility for what you're being paid for. I've brought in a general manager with 30 years of experience to teach Pete the car business. I'm going to help you make a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Pete didn't seem too convinced, but okay. Inventory has gone from 20 cars to over 150 in inventory. We're nice. averaging about 90 sales a month. It's only a matter of time before Auto Match USA is really profitable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. So that uh, that wraps up that. Now the comment for this video, Miguel says, "New to the channel, but love the content. Keep up, keep it up. Thank you so much, Miguel. I appreciate having you here. I appreciate you watching to the end. Now, uh, if you want, I'm going to check out what Auto uh, Match is up to. So check uh, either the, over here or over here for uh, the follow up to see where they are today or another video. I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you in the next video. Take care."